Hope you have been having a great day so far and hope you're enjoying all the next sessions that we have organized for you. My name is Pranav Nambiar. I'm a director of product management on Google Cloud. And I would like to welcome all of you to this session on digital transformation with Google's databases. In this session, I'm also joined by two tech leaders from the industry. We have Sudhir Kumar Reddy, who's a senior principal architect at Flipkart, one of India's largest e-commerce companies. We also have Yatin Chopra, who is a senior manager at Deloitte, one of GCP's top partners. So between the three of us, we're gonna bring in three different perspectives to this session. I'm gonna talk about the product and business side of things. Sudhir is gonna talk about it from the customer side, and Yatin is gonna talk about it from the partner side. And I'm hoping that between these three perspectives, you'll have a very insightful session. Hopefully you'll get new inspirations, new ideas, as you think about digital transformation. So without further ado, let's get going. As I said, we would like to organize the session into three parts. I'll start off with a discussion on digital transformation and also give you a peek into some of our top innovations that we have announced at Next. Uh, we will then have Sudhir, who's gonna talk about Flipkart's digital transformation journey. And then Yatin is gonna talk about their partnership with Kroger and what they did around associate productivity with digital transformation. Okay, so without further delay, let's dive right in into the first section on digital transformation. I wanted to start off with a very thought-provoking question, which I'm sure all of us have asked at some time or the other. And the question is, are you set up for innovation? Let's face it, in today's world, digital innovators are disrupting the traditional players. The bar on customer experience is raising every day. In fact, with technologies like Gen AI, it's gonna expand even further. And for every company to stay relevant, innovation is key. And to drive innovation, you need a foundation of good technology and good architecture, which is where digital transformation becomes so important. So, in fact, according to IDC, in 2025, about $2.8 trillion is gonna be invested globally by companies on digital transformation. That kind of shows the importance companies are giving to digital transformation. In fact, let me show you another interesting stat. Here's a Google Trends report on digital transformation, and as you can see, it's been seeing a you know, bit of a spike in the past couple of years. As reference point, if you compare it with the big data wave that started in 2010, you can clearly see that there's a new wave now with the digital transformation. Also, with technologies like Gen AI, Data Cloud, and pieces like that, a few of which I'll touch upon, we believe this new wave of digital transformation is gonna be much bigger than the big data wave that we have seen so far. So what's the big deal about digital transformation? Frankly, digital transformation is around all round transformation for your company. You can no longer be unidimensional as a company in this world. You'll have to not only look at cost reduction, productivity improvement, uh, you know, customer retention, scale, reliability, trust, sustainability. You'll have to look at all these dimensions together and that's where your technology investments are gonna be extremely critical. In fact, none of these challenges that you see here on the slide here are anything new. I'm sure all companies have been dealing with day in and day out for years. But the difference right now is it's looking at all round transformation, but there's one unique factor. And that factor is you need to future proof your applications for digital transformation. Let me give you a simple example. Let's say you're a gaming company, you have built a game, you think it's gonna be a good game, you have actually set it up such that it can scale to tens of thousands of users. But what if you were an overnight success and you actually saw hundreds of thousands, if not millions of users? What if your technology could not scale to deliver a good user experience? Do you think you'll be able to retain this user base again? Do you think you'll be able to win back this lost opportunity? It's less likely in this world. 
because the bar and the expectations that customers have is evolving, and it's a very high bar these days. So that's where future-proofing is so important. And when you talk about your technology stack, the most core component of the stack is your data management layer. That's because data is where your insights lie, data is where you can innovate, data is where you have the pieces that can help you build better experiences. So the big question we should ask is, how should we future-proof our data management layer or our databases per se? Let me give you another example. I'm sure all of you use digital banking these days. You know, you have your mobile app, you try to use banking transactions on the app. How would you feel if you get the dreaded message, we are undergoing maintenance right now, sorry, please try again later? I'm pretty sure you would not want to use the app again. You might start thinking about other options that you want to exercise. That's the world we live in. The nature of applications have changed. The expectations have changed. So you need a database layer that can actually scale to your requirements, that can be always on. You know, there's no concept of maintenance downtime anymore. I know companies today, they try to find, you know, low traffic durations, weekends, et cetera, to do some level of maintenance. But if people face a downtime when something critical is gonna happen, they're gonna lose trust. You also need your data management layer to actually be extremely elastic, so it can deal with ups and downs in your traffic. You need to be price performant, secure, and compliant. Now, all these challenges, all these aspects, easier said than done. It's difficult to get all these together, and that's the same challenge Google faced. In fact, all through Google's evolution, Google had to rethink data management. We had to reinvent the concept of databases as such. Today, we have three different services which kind of power almost all of Google's applications, and these applications cater to billions of users worldwide. So what are these services? First and foremost, we have Bigtable, which is our key value database, which is extremely suited for large-scale, low-latency, high-throughput applications. It's useful for IoT, it's useful for ad clicks tracking, it's even useful for, as a feature store for your AI ML applications. The next one is Spanner, which is kind of a hybrid between relational and non-relational databases. Spanner offers you the ad set uh, capabilities, the SQL capabilities of a relational database. It also offers you the scale and reliability of a non-relational database. So you get the mix of both, and so Spanner offers you a very versatile experience, and it's useful for a number of use cases, including financial transactions, inventory management, gaming, and so on. The next one is Firestore, which is our serverless document database built on top of Spanner. So Firestore not only gives you all the goodies that Spanner offers, it also offers you backend as a service. So with Firestore, you no longer need to deal with middle tiers. You can directly invoke the database from your clients. In fact, Firestore also gives you offline, online modes. It gives you real-time sync capabilities across clients, making it extremely suited for mobile and web kind of scenarios. But internally, all these applications power, uh, in the Google applications are powered by these services, and so we are continuously trying to innovate. We're trying to innovate by repeatedly raising the table stakes. So these services offer you five nines of availability, which is industry leading. There's no concept of maintenance downtime, so you don't have to bother finding low traffic situations or weekends for these services. Google takes care of it for you. You don't have to even bother about it. These services offer you really high levels of uh, uh, availability. They also offer you really high levels of fault tolerance. It also offers you automatic uh, partitioning. So by that way, you can actually, you don't have to handle manual partitioning and sharding of your data because it takes care of the scale for you pretty much as you need it, pretty much unlimited scale is available for you. In addition to that, there's a good experience around global replication. It's not something new for databases, but when you actually enter fault scenarios, how do you recover, how do you fail over, it's a fully, fully managed experience for you. Google takes care of those complexities for you. Last but not the least, it also offers you great price performance and security and compliance. So if you haven't already, this, these are some services that you would wanna check out. Uh, and we are continuously investing and innovating in these services all through. And with that, let me switch over to actually talk about some of our latest innovations. The lot of features that we have announced at Next for some of these, but I'm gonna to touch upon two key themes, data cloud and AI ML, and I'm gonna handpick just a few of these innovations which I think are gonna be very impactful for digital transformation. 
Let's start with the first one. I'm really excited to share with you that we are announcing the availability of Cloud Spanner Data Boost in GA right now. Data Boost is our transformative technology that actually enables you to run analytics on your operational workloads with hardly any impact on your transactional applications. So how does it actually work? As you might know, all our database services that I just mentioned here have a segregated compute and storage architecture. So storage actually sits on a distributed service called Colossus. In fact, Colossus is the same service that powers BigQuery and GCS. So when you provision Spanner resources and when you make a query, Spanner actually processes the queries and then interfaces with Colossus to actually process your data. With Data Boost, you get a parallel isolated channel which scales on demand and can directly process the data in Colossus without affecting your Spanner instances. So you might be wondering, okay, that's great. You know, it gives you great levels of isolation. Maybe it's a unique design, but so what? Well, what if I told you Data Boost is your key to truly enabling data sharing in your organization? It's your key to actually get data democratization in your organization. Let me explain. In the traditional world, you have a bunch of teams, each having their own databases. I'm sure all of you are dealing with that. What if you have a team of analysts who want to access that data and derive insights from that data? So to get access to it and actually figure out how they can utilize the data, they have to get into this negotiation and contract building with the database owner. The database owner has to figure out how much to scale, how, how can he build in isolations, how can he have enough throttling mechanisms so that the business critical workloads are not impacted with your analysts making some massive queries to your database. Now just think if every team has to make these negotiations with each other to access the data, then how cumbersome would it be? This is not a future-proof world. This is actually taking you back. So Data Boost changes this equation completely. So with Data Boost, as a database owner, you are just enabling access to Spanner for let's say a specific role, like say an analyst role, and giving them access via Data Boost. So if you have analysts who wants to query Spanner, they can just come over and make their queries. They pay for the capacity that they use. Data Boost will automatically scale as much as needed, and then it's gonna query and interface with Colossus, get the data without affecting your transactional workloads. So this is the era of true data democratization, a world where data sharing becomes extremely seamless. As I told you earlier, data is where the insights lie, and data is how you can innovate. So this is gonna be very crucial. But I'm not done yet. Data Boost can also enable you up to 100x more performant queries for specific queries because you've got a dedicated fleet that's actually provisioned on the fly to handle those queries. It can even help you with cost reduction because you're not duplicating your data, you're not having to over-provision for some of these analytical queries and other access patterns. It also simplifies governance because in the end, you have just one copy of your data. Okay, so with that, let me touch upon the other piece. So fine, you know, Data Boost is a great mechanism for you to query the data of Spark, BigQuery, whatever scenarios that you have, but what if you really need to replicate the data? That's where we have chain streams. Spanner, Bigtable, and Firestore all integrate ability to real-time stream changes to downstream systems like BigQuery. So essentially, we have a bunch of inbuilt connectors, which makes this very easy for you. In fact, you could go one step further, and you could even build event-driven programming by listening for specific changes in your uh, uh, you know, database updates, and then taking actions accordingly. So now, Chain Streams and Data Boost both enable you to consume content from the databases. What if you had to do it in the reverse direction? That's where reverse ETL comes in. I'm really excited to share with you that we've got two mechanisms here. On Firestore, we have Firestore extensions that helps you schedule jobs which can materialize data from BigQuery to Firestore. And on Bigtable, we are now announcing in preview ability to export data from BigQuery to Bigtable. So no longer do you need any ETL pipelines for this. You can pretty much just with a few clicks get the data exported to Bigtable. And as you all know, data warehouses are not best at serving traffic. 
You need reliable, high-scale, low-latency databases to accomplish that. And that's what reverse ETL capabilities here will do. So it's essentially like the world where you had wires and you have to connect everything, and now it's kind of a plug-and-play world where you can just click a few buttons and it'll take care of things for you. So, and trust me, we're just getting started here. We're gonna expand on many of these. Data Boost is also gonna come over to Bigtable and other services. It's all gonna expand to all the other services that we have. With that, let me switch over to the other uh, pattern, which is AI ML. I'm happy to share with you that we now have Spanner integration with Vertex AI uh, in GA. So this actually provides you real-time intelligence capabilities. So you could essentially invoke a model for predictions in real time in the context of your transaction. So if you're doing a credit card transaction, you can validate if it's a fraud, and in the SQL context itself, you could block it or you could actually continue with it. In fact, we are also further going to extend this to LLMs, large language models, so that you can actually build your generative AI applications with Spanner and interface with LLMs, uh, uh, you know, and get the uh, results via, within the Spanner context itself. So that's coming shortly. I'm not done yet. So I'm really happy to share with you that we are also announcing Spanner Studio in preview. Spanner Studio is like a one-stop shop to query, visualize, and uh, you know, evaluate the data that you have in Spanner. What's more, with Duet AI in Spanner, we are actually enabling you to generate SQL statements with just simple comments. This is really cool. Uh, you know, I didn't have the time for a demo, but generally you should go and try it out. You can just provide a comment for it to create a table for specific entities. It'll even create the SQL for you. It can even add data into your tables if you want to test things out or have some sample data added. It'll create the SQL for you uh, you know, right away just by simple comments, and it'll take care of it for you. So we believe this is gonna drastically improve the efficiency for uh, you know, all the developers here. And again, we're just getting started. There's a lot more coming down the lane. So you will see this going further and further, and hopefully this is gonna transform things even further. Well, I'm not done yet. So I'm really excited to also share with you that we have got a bunch of AI ML extensions for Firestore available for you. We've got extensions for text enrichment, like checking text toxicity or text summarization. We've got extensions for uh, you know, media enrichment, like image comparison for similarity or speech to text conversions. We also have extensions for interactive AI, like chatbots. So you could actually build chatbots or chat applications with ease with the power of Vertex AI and Firestore combined. So I can keep going, the, the more announcements here, but in the interest of time, I'm gonna stop here. Uh, let me hand over the stage to Sudhir. He's gonna talk to you about Flipkart and its journey in the digital transformation space. Over to you, Sudhir. Thanks, Pranav. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm happy to share with you Flipkart, uh, how we have modernized the data platform architecture on top of GCP. And we'll talk about how our real-time platform is helping us solve some of the key business decisions to be made instantly. Flipkart is the largest e-commerce company in India. Walmart is one of our largest investors. In the last 16 years, Flipkart has increased the adoption of e-commerce in India. Today, we have more than one-third of Indians shopping online on us. If you imagine the population of entire Los Angeles, that is the number of first-time users who were on Flipkart last year for a few days of sale, right? On the largest sale that we have is Big Billion Day sale, which is equivalent to your Black Friday sale, which we have here. Uh, in the last sale, the first minute or first few seconds, the first second of the sale, the entire population of San Francisco and San Jose combined were trying to enter Flipkart at the same time. That's the scale that we're talking about. And what does it take to run the infrastructure at this scale? We have millions of cores, we have hundreds of GPUs, we have exabytes of storage, and we have hundreds of GBPS of internet connection to solve the needs, right? And how do we run this? We are in a hybrid mode. We have two of our private data centers, which we run on-prem with, with our own team, and then we have two of our uh, regions running on GCP in India regions. And the reason we have chosen this is e-commerce being a bursty business where we have a lot of peak traffic at times. It makes sense for us to work with Google public cloud provider to use on-demand infrastructure, and it has helped us a lot. 
our data platform is primarily located on Google Cloud. So the scale of the data platform, if you see, we have more than 2,500 feeds of different types of events which we capture from the application, with mobile application, as well as the services which run on Flipkart, and all of them ingest close to 700 terabytes of data in a day, right? And we have more than 130 billion messages that we ingest in a day. If you look at the overall size of the data platform, we have 80 plus petabytes of storage, and we process on a daily basis 15 plus petabytes of data across multiple 8,000 odd pipelines, right? And uh, the volume of this is equivalent to 4 billion, close to 4 billion photos, high definition photos being processed in a day, right? Coming to the real time platform, uh, we have 900 plus applications running in, uh, uh, on, on the services and we, they process more than two petabytes a day. And we have more than a million messages being processed per second, right? So what does the platform look like, right? This is a very simplified version of the platform. Uh, so if you see at, at the primary uh, bottom layer, we have the ingestion layer. We have ingestion where some of the systems ingest in batch mode, where they are not able to do it, and most of the systems ingest in real time mode. Within a few seconds of the activities on end user devices or the services servers which run, all of that data gets into the data platform. From there, it enters to a messaging queue. And from there, the real-time platform consumes it and serves critical business use cases for end users, which are business users or developers or uh, analysts who want to look at the data. Or they even get into the serving systems for uh, optimizations, CTR predictions, and other systems are there. Right? And then there's a whole uh, data which comes in. We store it as it is uh, for batch consumption. And then we have close to 9,000 odd pipelines which run different types of workloads on top of it, right from Spark, MapReduce, and other workloads to uh, do different type of analytics on top of it and serve that to different systems via reports or ad hoc query analysis or even export to their own systems. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, just to add to that, we also have data quality uh, on this, in the platform. We have metadata and then we have knowledge graph. These are all some things which have invested on-prem over time. So on-prem, we were running primarily on the Hadoop tech stack. We had Hadoop, HDFS, YAN, uh, HBase, uh, Vertica, Kafka, and all of these Elasticsearch tech stacks. When we looked at modernizing it, with GCP, we picked some of the best offerings from them. We looked at PubSub, Bigtable, Dataproc, uh, uh, GCS, all of these, and we found that doing the right mix of what we have invested over time versus what Google has invested over time, what is the best combination of it to leverage for us purpose, and we have picked it up in a mode that uh, we can run the data platform at scale for handling big blend day sale, right? And we had, given the size of the data, we have 80 petabytes of data. We were, we did a migration in six months, the entire data onto GCP, and were able to run all of the 10,000 odd pipelines as on GCP, and without having a downtime, we did a seamless migration within a very short time of six months. And all of it was able to be achieved because of the kind of uh, stable systems that we have on Google Cloud and the investments that we had done at our end. Right, coming to real-time systems, right? Uh, what are the use cases that we have today in the in, you know, in our company, right? So the moment a user is active on the app, Flipkart app, within single digit seconds, we get the entire funnel right from how many unique visits are happening right now on Flipkart to how many users are actually browsing the product pages, which category of pages are they browsing to how many products are being checked out to the entire orders being placed, the entire funnel of it, we today computed in single digit seconds of the activity on the user device, right? A lot of use cases on CDR predictions for the search to optimize the algorithms for better ranking. Uh, there are use cases where the advertising systems take it for improving what, which ads are more, uh, more likely to be clicked on, right? So there are a lot of these fraud detection use cases a lot of uh, finance uh, wants a view of saying, well, how is the business doing right now? Right? They want to understand how, how, what categories are working well, what is not working well, uh, what is the profit and loss for each of these verticals. A lot of these use cases is they want data in near real time, and all of these are being powered by our platform. So over the years, we have invested in a platform internally called as Fstream. Uh, this is equivalent to the Google Beam, if you're aware. Uh, this is an abstraction built layer um, 
Underneath, we have Apache Spark and Flink. Uh, and we have built abstractions specifically for our business use cases where uh, there is repeated code, which most of the pipelines have it. We try to abstract it out in an easier way so that the developer lies, uh, writes less number of codes for his purpose. Um, so most of the stuff like uh, we do is there are multiple pipelines, like there's an order pipeline and there's a cancellation pipeline and there is a category pipelines which come in, right? But most of these are different systems in the company. And then how do you combine all of that into a single metric that people are interested in and that too in near real time, right? So we have invested in scaling these systems, building these abstractions over the years. Um, and the key requirements for these are highly durable, reliable, and uh, scalable, right? So this is the key USP that we have built over years. And how does the system look like? If you look at high-level design, it basically, this is a very simplified version of it. So if you see there are users doing activities, and there is a web service which captures all of that data and ingests into uh, the PubSub. And from PubSub, we consume it via our pipelines and then we pump it data into BigQuery and Bigtable. And then we have reports on top of BigQuery. This is a very simplified version of it. Underneath, I'll give you an example of a use case today if you were to compute uh, how, what is the CTR prediction for the pipelines, right, for search. So you will have search views coming in via one pipeline. You will have search clicks coming in via another pipeline. You will have the category of the product, like uh, which category, what is the a metadata associated with the category coming in from other product. So all of those are handled by the Epstein layer with just declarative code for the application developers or a SQL code. And all of this computes in near real time and pushes it into these stores. On-prem, we were primarily running this on Kafka, this layer, and uh, uh, our, our own HBase setup clusters over here. And we had Elasticsearch and Vertica here. When we moved to GCP, we have modernized this by replacing it with PubSub, Bigtable, and BigQuery, and Looker. So what are the benefits associated with this, right? Bigtable is amazingly scalable, right? We today run Bigtable cluster with 1,400 plus nodes. Uh, today, the kind of operations we do is equivalent to reading a 4K HD movie with every second. That's the kind of scale we use uh, Bigtable for, right? So it's, it's, it's actually working out really well for us, right? Uh, Edgebase had a lot of issues, operational issues for us. A lot of hours used to be spent by the developers in ensuring the stability of the system and fixing day-to-day -day issues, and they were not focusing on the platform capabilities or the data products on top of it. So by moving to Bigtable, all of that ops over it has gone away for us. It's become very easy for us, right? And it has led to fewer incidents, fewer outages, and uh, approximately 10% of the downtimes which were caused previously with HBase and other self-managed tech stacks and all have gone, right? HTable, uh, big, big table is cost effective for us, right? It has an amazing order scale functionality, right? Now for a big billion day kind of sale, we have huge amount of users which coming in, but not in a BAU, so in, a, in, a, in a regular day, right? So how do you handle that kind of scale? So big table, all we have to do is have a min and max configured and the systems automatically scale up and scale down, right? And help us save the cost. So we've seen upwards of 20% cost reduction in some of these pipelines. Right, and and uh, given the si size of scale we need required for big billion day sale, we have seen it working really nice without having any issues, and it's been really well for us. Right, and the most interesting thing for us was uh, open source compatibility because we are previously running on uh, Edgebase, and uh, Edgebase a compatible API works as it is on top of Bigtable. We didn't have to do any code changes. All of more 900 odd pipelines seamlessly ran on this. So it, overall, it's very easy for us to migrate and set up and run it on Google Cloud. And th this gives you out-of-the-box business continuity plan where you can set it up in multiple regions. Given the kind of requirements we have, our, our business users want to look right now what is happening during a big billion day kind of a sale, right? So we can't afford a single minute of downtime of this pipelines. So at these kind of sales, we run it in two of the regions in parallel, big table replication happens out of the box, pubs up replication happens out of the box. We have pipelines deployed in both the regions to compute and we have reporting dashboarding solutions where we built a BCB. A lot of these solutions were very simplified by using this plug and play building blocks and we were focusing more on the high level abstraction and uh, products on top of the core infrastructure which was provided out of the box for us, right? 
overall, I would say Bigtable has been a big powerful tool for us in scaling up our systems and uh, helping us run the sale at where we are today. And we are hoping this year it will be larger than the last year's sale and hoping that things go smooth. Right. So this I'll hand over to uh, uh, Yatin. He will continue on this. Thank you all. I hope this was useful. Hello, hello, okay, cool. Thanks, Sudhir. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Yatin Chopra. I'm part of uh, Deloitte's AI and data practice. And I've spent most of my career serving retailers, um, helping them maximize value out of the data assets by building solutions which generate insights and insights which drive operational excellence by improving associate experience, which is what we'll talk about here in a second. And then also insights which actually help in customer retention as well as acquisition. Um, Deloitte and, and, and GCP have had a very strong and growing relationship. Uh, just yesterday, uh, we were recognized for Partner of the Year in 2023 for four different categories. Um, and we are showing up as one team uh, across multiple strategic accounts. As a backdrop, the last 10 years or so has been spent uh, really digitizing or improving the consumer experience. Um, it was not until, I would say, uh, as the pandemic began that, you know, there was a, a light shed on what about the associate? So for, for retailers who have large physical store presence, right, they, and facing, you know, talent shortages and other things, what would, and the lack of uh, digitization, it was pretty, uh, I would say, a slam dunk opportunity to start automating and digitizing the day-to-day -day working of an associate. Because a great associate experience directly influences an amazing consumer experience. With that said, Kroger as a retailer, um, expansive physical presence, uh, more than 2,800 stores. Uh, fun fact I found out earlier, I think last week, um, they were the largest sushi seller in 2022, uh, who would have known? 40 million pieces of sushi sold. Um, but you know, the challenges here was they have more than 400,000 associates. And actually they have made, I would say, in the last five years, very strategic bets on improving the associate experience. And one such was called associate productivity, which is what I'll talk about next. What we built here on cloud, I mean, obviously uh, GCP uh, native, Google and, and, and Deloitte showed up as one. Uh, we built a smart data platform which powers two applications. Application one, which is the tasking application, which is, you know, it pushes, um, in, in the consumer speak, we say next best offer, but think of next best action for an associate to do. So imagine the power of having um, data and insights in, in, your, in, in your hand, and I actually have a, uh, the app in my mobile phone, so I can demo it later uh, at our booth at Deloitte, but pushes what we should be doing next based on events happening in the store. And then the second application was store audit, which is just making sure that, you know, what was previously only registered on paper has been digitized to make sure that all the processes are happening uh, as they were planned for, or standing operating procedures. Like any good consulting firm, uh, you know, we have a framework of selecting databases. So when we started putting pieces together uh, to build the architecture, this is now summer of 2021, um, we, you know, we actually started uh, to prove out the hypothesis that if we actually empowered an associate with what they should be doing next, that we can actually move the needle and make them more productive in their day-to-day -day jobs. So we started actually with Postgres or Cloud SQL and we started with three stores where the POC went well over a 10 week period. Um, and then we, using the same architecture, we moved up to 25 stores. And it wasn't actually until when we hit 100 stores and the data we were flowing in that we realized we were gonna start missing very specific SLAs required and also the experience the associate was having. It's, it's then is when we decided that, you know, uh, we move over and parallel track to Spanner, uh, which delivered a fit across the board and as, uh, Pranav also pointed out, right? Um, I think the key here was um, we, I would, you know, we delayed scaling past 100 stores um, 
as we caught up and re-architected and putting Spanner as the backbone of our architecture, and then um, you know, 500 stores at a time is when we have scaled, and we've been now live at more than 2,400 stores for the last year, uh, bolted on many more capabilities and use cases and tasks, and things are going well. Um, quick look at the deployment architecture. You know, we are ingesting data from on-prem, multiple sources, whether it's HR, trucking, logic, or whatever signals are happening in the store. Um, they all are stitched together and stored in the Spanner database, and each application underlying store is also a Spanner. Um, the data science layer, which is where the magic happens in terms of prioritization and task creation, that's what pushes out to the mobile phones, and then as associates are actually using um, and, and doing their day-to-day -day jobs, that feedback is looped back in, and those events then trigger the next set of actions. What we are today, um, over the last 18 months, we've built a central tasking application. Um, and we have just recently, over the summer, also, so today, what we've done so far was be able to prioritize and um, do the next best action for associates within a department. But then what happens if you have excess labor on another department and not enough work to do on the other one, where we've been able to prove the hypothesis that if I needed help in bakery, and there was actually more tasks to be done and somebody didn't show up, but there was another associate with training and the skills available in a different department, how do I guide that associate to do that task? So we call it directed uh, workflow. That also has improvement should be put into place you know, later this year. Um, again, the mantra being right associate, right task at the right time. Um, with this client, a lot of paper-based processes now have been digitized, so we've collected a lot of data over the last year which are now gonna help us do more labor recommendations, scheduling recommendations, and even dynamic walks and tasking, which is basically helping them potentially you know, pivot away from processes they've been following uh, within the store for retail ops over the last 10 or 15 years. And then finally, the vision, obviously, in the next couple of years is uh, fully connected store, and this is a very complementary platform in the system. With that, as I hand it over back over to Pranav, I would say that you know, we showed up as one team, which is whether it's Deloitte, Kroger, um, and Google. Um, obviously, Spanner um, was critical to the success and the scale we needed to achieve. And we're extremely excited about how we unpack. We have a roadmap of capabilities going in FY24, where we will be unpacking um, data boost, is what Pranav had said, and then Vertex AI, so putting in the data science of the AI models in play. Pranav, I'll hand it back over to you. Thank you, Yatin. So thank you, Yatin and Sudhir, for sharing some really valuable insights. Uh, I hope this was very useful for you. Definitely, we try to capture different perspectives. Uh, in the end, there are a few patterns that you might see emerging from all these three different flavors of discussions. One is around how data is being handled. There's a tin, now there's a focus around bringing data together, breaking down the silos so that you can have better insights. Sudhir talked about real-time insights because that's where the differentiation is. If you remember earlier when I started, I asked with the question, are you all set for innovation? That's the place where you could actually make a difference by actually going more real-time versus something that's post-event, right? In this world, in the end, it boils down to the kind of technology that you can pick up on. I gave you a brief overview, a very high-level overview of some of these technology pieces that we have been investing in, some of the announcements that we shared. But if you are interested, we definitely have some dedicated sessions, specific deep dive sessions that will actually go deeper into many of these topics, whether it's Spanner, Bigtable, Firestore, some of our Gen AI pieces. Please check them out. That will be very informative for all of you is what I believe. And last but not the least, please do take the time to provide us feedback. I know digital transformation is not an easy journey. I've had a lot of conversations with industry leaders and customers, a number of challenges in there. Google has gone through the same process. And so you know, some of our services we built was just to help us with that journey. I look at digital transformation more as a journey as than as a destination. So you know, think of it as continuous evolution. Think of it as something that you need to continuously future-proof yourself for, because new unpredictable things will come down the lane. Hopefully, you know, some of these pieces that we shared has triggered some level of ideas or inspirations in your minds. 
Hopefully this was useful to you. With that, I wish you the very best in your digital transformation journey. Thank you so much. We will be around here for questions if you want. You can come over, I think we're almost at time, so you can come over to us and you know we can answer your questions. Uh, if you want to check out some of our services, there's definitely booths there, you know, as Deloitte, uh, you know, Yatin mentioned, some of the, he can show you the uh, app there as well. Also, you know, if you have account teams with you, reach out to them. If you want to do a deep dive with any of these services, we'll be more than happy to help you out. With that, thank you so much. You've been a great audience. Wish you all the best.